So hello, Bradley. We're here again. This show will never end. This is the Search for Joe Lowe, episode eight. Um, we've been running this uh, intermittent series on YouTube and on our Project Raisin Presents podcast channel since uh, last year, um, and we're making headway. Um, in our last episode, we uh, revealed that Joe Lowe, uh, for those of you who don't know, if you don't know, that's crazy. But anyway, if you don't know, he's one of the world's most successful white collar criminals, stole billions and billions of dollars from a Malaysian investment fund, used it to make the Wolf of Wall Street movie and, and uh, many other things. Uh, we wrote a book about it, Billion Dollar Whale. Um, and anyway, he went on the run um, in 2016 and hasn't really been seen much since then. That's why we are uh, on the lookout for him because there's indictments for his arrest in the US, in Singapore and in Malaysia, where he's from. Um, he's living in China, which we've been able to establish through this, this series. Um, and in the last episode, we showed that he ha has a company in Taiwan. And today we have a very special guest, Chris Horton, who is a, a Taipei based freelance journalist. Um, he saw uh, a tweet of mine about the about the Jolo's Taiwan company, um, and he uh, got in touch with us and said that he wanted to look into it. So, Chris, welcome. Um, it's great to have you on the show. Tell us uh, what happened Thanks, after you after you got uh, you got involved with us, and then you went and started to ask the Taiwanese government about this uh, Jolo company. Well, so uh, the first thing uh, that I did was I, I stopped by the registered address uh, of of the office for the uh, the company that's on the corporate records for Jolo's company in, in Taiwan. And it was an instant office. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Regis, uh, the, the instant office company. Uh, I went in there and I spoke with the office manager uh, and she explained uh, that basically uh, she couldn't give too many details because of uh, privacy laws in Taiwan. but. She did. She was able to say that uh, his company, uh, which is called uh, Ming Ming Shu Tozi, which roughly translates to uh, Bright Vision Investment, uh, that it had it had left some time ago, so it hadn't been present, even though it's still legally registered to that address. Um, and so that was uh, December twenty first uh, of last year, and uh, I followed up uh, with the Min Taiwan's Ministry of Economic Affairs and got in touch with. The office that's in charge of vetting uh, uh, incoming foreign investment, and while it did seem that there had been some sort of uh, awareness in Taiwanese media that uh, that you had uncovered this this company registered in Taiwan to Jolo, it it doesn't seem like the government had done much about it, and so within uh, basically I I contact on that Monday I had contacted them about midday and by the end of the afternoon, the Investigation Bureau of Taiwan announced that they were investigating Joe Lo's company. So it does seem like the attention that uh, that you've brought to this company has uh, has kind of pushed things forward over here on this side. And, and what what is it? Do you have any idea of like what could happen in a case like that? Like, I mean, I mean I'm not sure you can speculate too much, but I mean, is it possible that that company could be frozen or seized or something like that? It's it's really hard to say. Uh, I I would imagine that uh, any any major uh, transactions involving that company will be scrutinized heavily. Now, the 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 thing with investigations in Taiwan is once uh, something is under investigation, then basically the government says very little, if anything, about it, other than maybe it, it won't comment until the investigation is complete. So it's it's really it's really hard to say where where things are going to go from here, but I do I do think this does establish pretty uh, pretty convincingly that at some point uh, after uh, the one MDB uh, you know, scandal blew up uh, that that Jolo had come to uh, to Taiwan because uh, so I mean as as you mentioned in your previous uh, episode you know he registered the company in November of 2017. And uh, it was also uh, there was the last uh, activity in terms of registration was in 2019, uh, May of 2019, when Jolo's wife, uh, Jessalyn Chuan Tech Ying, was removed from the board of directors. Um, one year before that, like in between those two years, uh, the Malaysian newspaper Nanyang Xiang Pao was reporting that uh, Jolo might be hiding in Taiwan. 
And uh, I, I was, I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing story. I, I was definitely trying to find, uh, find leads or clues uh, where he might be because uh, Taiwan uh, does not have extradition laws with, uh, or extradition treaties with most, uh, with most major countries. So this this could have been a a, a, a safe place for uh, for him to ha hide out if if a bit small compared to China. Um, anyways, uh, I I phoned five star hotels and yacht marinas around Taiwan, but uh, wasn't really able to confirm that he had that he had visited. But essentially, uh, according to lawyers uh, that I've spoken with here, in order to register a company, uh, you have to be physically present for at least the registration of the bank account for that company. And so, if that was 2017, that would have probably that would have probably put Jolo here in in 2017. Well, we know that he has uh, long-standing connections with Taiwan. I mean, in Billion Dollar Well, we wrote about how he had been dating the Taiwanese pop star Elva Xiao. Is that how you say her name? Um, yes, he, yes, actually, he he, fam he famously took her to the uh, Palm Jumeirah Hotel in Dubai um, and had this kind of nauseating. Uh, event where two models uh, jumped out of a parachuted out of a helicopter while uh, Elva and, and Jola sat on a dais on the beach there and then they walked up with sh Chopard uh, jewelry for, for her and it was it was I think it was reported back then in, in the Taiwanese media and elsewhere that that was a one million dollar uh, engagement party or, or a proposal uh, we subsequently found out that Jolo actually didn't propose to her then. That was just an ordinary dinner date. Um, and the whole thing was recorded by a, a group of professional videographers from every every conceivable angle. So, um, yeah, they dated, I think. And so he has a he has a connection with with Taiwan. Um, and I think he was going to try to launch her international music career as well. Um, it was at a time he had to deal with Pharrell Williams. Uh, and I think they were trying to get her onto the international stage because she's pretty she's pretty well known around Asia, isn't she, uh, Elvis? Yeah. Yes, yes, for sure. And actually, uh, the uh, one of the local media articles uh, in Taiwan that that announced this uh, this investigation, the headline started off with he chased after Elvis Xiao and then went in went on to to talk about the actual news uh, of the story. So, yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely remembered for uh, for his uh, his interest in her. But uh, there's there's not a, there's not a huge uh, awareness of one MDB. Uh, I mean, outside of financial circles here, I, I most of the Taiwanese people I've spoken to, uh, in, including uh, the the former office manager for uh, for Joe Lowe's company here, uh, they 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 might have heard of it a little bit, but it it, it does seem to be kind of off of the uh, the radar here. Tom, I, I'm I'm really hurt that you thought it was nauseating because I thought it was really a sweet gesture. You know, he had he had a heart made out of I think fire or fireworks, um, but and actually I remember I'm 100% sure we've heard that that he was also chasing another Taiwanese pop star at some point. I'm going to try to find her name because I, I think we definitely came across that. And in Taiwan was always kind of the a murky part of Joe Lo's um, around the world every six weeks uh, tour. Like we never quite understood what he was up to in Taiwan, um, but we always heard, and there was always speculation that he may be also hiding there or spending a lot of time in Taiwan. Um, uh, it's well, funny Chris, you're telling the story, story, Chris, about the, calling the hotels, because that's actually how we found Joe Lo once. We, the, the Journal Bureau in Shanghai just called all the five-star hotels, and then they called the Peninsula Hotel, and they said, oh, Mr. Mr. Lo, our long-term client from Malaysia, yes, he's staying here. <laughs> and, so, and then I, I actually went over there, and... Um, Try to find him, but it's, I think we told that story before. But it was pretty fun. Uh, but Chris, tell us a little bit about Taiwan as, a, as an offshore center, because you know Jolo is more associated with the British Virgin Islands and you know the Curacao, and you know he has he has he had office front offices in Hong Kong, Macau, places like that, um, yeah. Seychelles, famously. Um, is Taiwan considered an offshore center? Is it a good place to hide your money? Uh, I wouldn't hide money in Taiwan, although maybe maybe people do. Uh, it's it's pretty uh, in terms of especially if you're a foreigner, uh, the 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 regulations and rules for uh, for foreign direct investments uh, and even just for personal banking for foreigners, uh, it's it's pretty uh, it's uh, it's a bit 
overly bureaucratic and, and difficult to deal with. Uh, you know, it's you if you compare it, for for example, to Hong Kong, uh, it's it's just night and day in terms of just being able to get things done quickly and efficiently. So it, I, I think. Is it sorry to break in? Is it a relatively clean country? Uh, I think they're trying to be clean, but uh, there's also there's also the whole thing where there's a lot of a lot of companies here that then hold companies in perhaps the BVI or, or Caymans uh, elsewhere. So it's it, what what exists here might be clean, but uh, it might be part of a, a bigger shell game involving offshore tax havens. I mean, the fact that the government actually took action after, you know, we reported on it and you you went and questioned them is is interesting, right? I mean, that wouldn't happen. That hasn't happened in our other seven episodes where we've we've, you know, mentioned him having places in China, companies in China. As far as we know, that, you know, we, we reported that he had a company in the Shanghai World Financial Center um, in Pudong in Shanghai that that had three hundred million dollars plus in paid up capital. And as far as we know, nothing happened to that. Right, Bradley. So. I guess at least Taiwan's doing something here. Yeah, I, well, I think you know it, it could it could potentially be a coincidence that uh, that your reporting and, and my query uh, happened at the same time that they decided to investigate. Of course, uh, I think there's there's a good likelihood that uh, that uh, the the increased attention uh, might have might have driven some people to uh, to investigate and also. Investigation, as I mentioned earlier, kind of means you don't have to say anything anymore. So, so in a way, that that buys the government here some time. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see what, uh, if anything, this investigation comes up with. Well, thanks, Chris, for joining us and for for taking part in our hunt for Jolo, um, which will continue. Um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel for more episodes of uh, The Hunt for Jolo, Where is Jolo? Um, and we will be uh, putting this up on our Brazen Presents uh, a podcast channel, which you can listen to on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me, guys.